At the very end of 2021, during the Game Awards, Xbox has demonstrated Ninja Theory's upcoming Hellblade 2 with gameplay and many label this as the first true showcase of next generation graphics. And in today's video we talk about the latest info from Ninja Theory, how they have realized such high quality graphics and animations. We will also take a deeper look into what made these visuals so outstanding and we talk about some other games that are actually scheduled for 2022 that will also provide a new level of graphical fidelity, so let's talk about next gen graphics. Hello gamers from around the world, this is Boxenberger, the video game enthusiast from Germany with a video on next generation graphics. I'm mainly focusing on Hellblade 2 in this video because not only did we get some infos in how the amazing animation work and graphical fidelity was realized in the demonstrated gameplay trailer, but also is it a true showcase for the capabilities of the Unreal Engine 5 and that engine is going to be used amongst many many studios, especially in the Xbox Game Studio roster. But we will also discuss a bit what we can expect from other games that use different next-gen game engines. But before we get started I want to ask you one quick favor. If you end up enjoying this video it would be awesome of you to consider to hit the like and subscribe button and maybe even turn on the notification bell to not miss out on future content. Okay, thank you guys, you are awesome and now let's have a closer look on the Hellblade 2 gameplay. I mean everyone can see for themselves that this game looks absolutely stunning, but recently we have gotten an update on how this visual fidelity has actually been achieved. As always I'll link the source in the description down below. So I want to start actually in the middle of the shown gameplay trailer with the big troll that the main protagonist Senua is fighting along with her tribe. In a recent interview they elaborated that Ninja Theory wanted that troll to be on the highest possible quality that is technical possible to date. That means that they didn't just want to have it good looking, they wanted the animation work of that 40 foot tall troll as realistic as possible. That means that all the fat flapping around needed to be realistically rendered, having physical properties, a high level of texture quality, skin movement, etc. Etc. And to achieve that they partnered with a Canadian visual effects studio called Silver Dynamics that also does some cinematic work in visual effects. So when they started to work on that troll they added realistic physical properties to all the skin flaps hanging around this dude. They added proper gravity simulation for all the body parts and when they loaded in all the high quality texture assets and added the muscle movement the rendering time of this troll alone was nowhere near as to what we consider real time. On their high power cluster 50 frames took about 6 hours to render. Yeah, just to put that into perspective, when we talk about real time at 60 fps, which obviously became the new norm in the current generation of consoles, it means that one frame gets a total render time of 16.6 milliseconds. And in those 16.6 milliseconds, everything has to be rendered, not just a troll. So, the studio Silva that Ninja Theory partnered with added all the performance capture data and whatnot into their real time trainer, which uses a complete new technology that uses machine learning in their VFX tool to train train the troll asset to perform all of the animations along with novel pauses in real time while maintaining the rich dynamics of the original simulation. This is quite an interesting statement because Ninja Theory was teasing something like that about 10 months ago when they talked about the technology that they want to use in their other game in development, Project Mara, but we get to that in a second. With the machine learning trained animation work they were able to run the animation of that troll with all the trained animations and new pauses in only about 3 milliseconds per frame in the Unreal Engine. This machine learned troll was then handed over back to Ninja Theory and they were able to implement that in the gameplay that we have seen here leaving enough headroom for all the other stuff that is happening at the same time on screen. Now this is quite an interesting thing to discuss because we have seen in the aforementioned Project Mara demo Ninja Theory talk about how they want to push new technologies to the limit. They are very well aware that they are a small team but they literally said that they are looking into new procedural generation tools that will help the small team to achieve astonishing things. And now we obviously know that machine learning is something that they are not just looking into, but that they are actively using in their game. It doesn't necessarily mean that the console itself will run the machine learning part, but we know that the Xbox Series consoles are very well capable of machine learning through their FP16 capabilities. But I digress. In this case obviously they used it to build themselves a smart tool to develop such high quality animation work. And we know that Ninja Theory is really looking into building their own tools. In a previous dev 
Diary, we learned that they built their own material scanner for Project Mara and obviously Hellblade 2 to use high quality textures. They built a brand new motion capture studio to push that to the limit too. And they talked about them partnering with Epic to build new tools for bench on the market facial animations. And yeah, looking at this trailer, you can really tell that they are making use of these technologies. Another thing we can see in the trailer is the fast camera movement across vast landscapes. When in 2019, the first in-engine but non-gameplay trailer from Hellblade 2 was shown, even the tech experts from Digital Foundry talked about them having their doubts that this is actually running in real time on a console, because they literally didn't see any pop-ins or artifacts. Now here we have actual gameplay running and we can see the fast camera movement. There's really no visible texture pop-in or level of detail changes and so we can definitely assume that Hellblade 2 will make use of the velocity architecture, meaning the possibility to load in textures and objects really fast into the memory pool, leading to this smooth camera flow. But to make use of such technologies, you have to have an engine that is actually capable of, of fully utilizing all that technology features and tools that are available with the new consoles. And Unreal Engine 5 is definitely one of those engines. In April, we will get the Xbox exclusive Stalker 2, which will probably be the first big AAA game using Unreal 5 outside of Fortnite. And it will be the first showcase of what this engine can actually do. But I want to mention two other games that will most likely launch in 2022 that run on different game engines that are making use of those technologies as well. And with that they will push graphics on to the next level. Those games will only run on the current gen console hardware and PC, cause they are using the respective technologies. One of those games definitely will be Forza Motorsport. The developer Turn 10 has been working for 5 years now on this new game and one of the main reasons is because they built a brand new engine from the ground up that will power the next Forza Motorsport. We haven't seen continued gameplay yet, but in 2020 we got an in-engine trailer of a very early build of that engine, which already looked promising. We know that the Xbox Series consoles, along with the RDNA 2 architecture and the DirectX 12 Ultimate support, features a bunch of technologies that were simply not supported in the old engine, like VRS, sampler feedback streaming, the velocity architecture and hardware accelerated ray tracing. And when we have a look at Forza Horizon 5, we know that the old Forza engine was definitely capable of a lot of things, because the game looks absolutely stunning. However, one thing that is definitely noticeable is the pop-in in driving scenes at high velocity. It's not game breaking or anything, but it tells you that, that the engine wasn't built with the velocity architecture in mind. So in the new Forza engine, this will definitely change. They will make use of the velocity architecture and it will be able to load in all the assets fast enough. In an interview with Engadget, Chris Tector, the software architect at Turn 10, who oversees the technical direction of the Forza engine, gave some ideas what their focus for the new engine is. It's not just about the velocity architecture, but also about things like ray tracing. For them, technologies like ray tracing allow them to not just give great reflections and whatnot, but also to render for instance the interior of cars way more realistic because they don't have to rely on pre-baked lighting. So things like for instance the wheel of the car will look way more realistic than in any other previous games. Of course ray tracing is hardware expensive, but he also explained that technologies like VRS really help them to gain more performance out of each and every frame. So we can bet that the ray tracing implementation will be supported at least at 60 FPS. Oh and by the way, this engine is also going to be used in the upcoming third person action role playing game Fable, but that's a topic for another video. And before we wrap it up, I also want to mention the upcoming Starfield, which will also only run on current gen consoles and capable PCs, because the new engine that the game runs in, the Creation Engine 2.0, is going to use a lot of the aforementioned features as well. This is also a title where we haven't seen proper gameplay yet, but Bethesda emphasized that they didn't apply any cinematic tricks, so we can assume that what we have seen is the real deal. We have also seen camera movements across bigger landscapes with big draw distances without any noticeable pop-ins or level of detail changes. We have also seen great looking volumetric effects with smoke coming out of the spaceship or when they started up the engines, we could see the light realistically traveling through volumetric fog and smoke. In another scene in this trailer, we have seen off-screen reflections like this guy here in the mirror and this could be a hint for the implementation of ray tracing as well, but we will see that more in detail once we get the actual gameplay review. The head of Bethesda Game Studios, Todd Howard, talked about that new engine and he said, We refresh it with every game. We too will acknowledge that it needed more work than it has in previous times. We do that between generations and we have been doing it. I can say that the creation engine work we started a while ago. We have more people doing engine work now by a factor of 5 probably than we have ever had. So the creation engine overhaul is the largest we have probably ever had. From rendering to animation to pathing to procedural generation. I don't want to say everything but it's a significant, significant overhaul. It's taken us longer than 
we would have liked, but it's going to power what we are doing with Starfield and Elder Scrolls 6. When people see the results, they'll hopefully be as happy as we are with what's on screen. And I wanna use this as a closing statement of this video. We've only seen glimpses of the next gen game engines. Unreal 5 is probably the one we have seen the most of, with gameplay for the upcoming Stalker 2 looking absolutely amazing and Hellblade 2 was truly a next gen graphic showcase. Other games in 2022 that will only run on the current gen hardware will definitely also push towards a new bench on the graphic side like Forza or Starfield. And beyond 2022 we will definitely see even more amazing engines like EA's Frostbite engine, optimized for next gen in the next Mass Effect and Dragon Age game, the complete overhaul of the Insomniac engine in the Spider-Man games, the adaptation of the Forza engine in Fable, the new iteration of the It Tech engine in the rumored Quake reboot or the next Doom or Wolfenstein game etc etc. So gamers have a truly stunning generation ahead and 2022 is going to be the first year where we will get flooded with next gen only games. But for now I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did so please do not forget to hit the like and subscribe button as well as the notification bell. Definitely stay tuned I have a couple of very cool things coming to my channel very very soon. And if you want to support the channel even further you can now become a channel member and get early access to my videos and custom made badges and emojis. And let me thank everyone who supports this channel in any kind of way. You guys are awesome and make this channel to what it is. And now let me know in the comments down below. What did you think of the Hellblade 2 graphics? Are there any other game engines that you are excited for? And besides here on YouTube you can also hit me up on Twitter where I share a lot of opinions and gaming discussions. But for now thank you very much for watching. I see you the next time and game on.